Wow, those were just so great. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Eilertson and I had the great honor of um, putting these two artists together. And I wanna tell you a little curatorial secret. You never really know <laughs> if it's gonna work until the day the art's on the wall or in the center of the room. But after the first day of installing, um, I just, uh, my breath was taken away because this exhibition is really exceptional. And I know you're not supposed to go out. I know you're not supposed to be in groups of people, but I really, really, really want to encourage you to go see this show. You can't get, get it on a computer screen. You can get a taste of it, a little flavor of it, but seeing it in real life is such a different and really, um, what do I want to say, just, just inspiring thing to see. And I was so delighted. I mean, you never know. I was so delighted to see how these two artists' works worked together to really show off each other. The two of them didn't know each other before meeting for this exhibition. They come from really different places in their worlds and in their lives. They both have really supportive families. I'd like to put that. And um, Kathy's daughter filmed the video that you saw. And Amy, I think, is uh, Nick's wife. And she is by his side through all thick and thin and helped did his video also. But I think having both of them having such a wonderful family collaboration really supports their work. Let's allows them to do what they want to do and need to do. So I have about uh, five or six questions. Um, and then I think at the end, we're going to um, hopefully you might have some that you'll enter into the chat room or um, that's right, right, Antonia, that they can enter questions into the chat room at the end. I'm going to start with one of my favorite all time quotes uh, from a woman named Mary Davis that speaks to me about these two artists works. To walk in nature is to witness a thousand miracles. I believe you both see miracles in nature every day. So uh, because the title of this exhibition is Abstract Nature, I'd love you both to talk for just a few minutes about your relationship to the natural world and why or how it inspires your work. How do you experience it in your daily life, if you do, and also in your approach to your creative practice? Kathy looks like she has a thought there. Do you, <laughs> you oh, start? I'll start. Um, I walk in nature every day and it's a place for me to balance and reset. And I spend time in my garden and my studio looks out on a creek and the branches of the trees growing there were a direct inspiration for some of the recent work. Um, observing them every day, watching the light change, watching how they change through the seasons. And it's just always, it's always a miracle. <laughs> Um, and then of course, like you saw that I, I'm a collector of leaves and things. And so I actually scan those and use those in my artwork so they could actually become part of the art. Um, and this, I'm, the cyanotypes are created um, from branches that I scavenge and, um, you know, so they're directly related. So I'm using nature as inspiration and nature as raw material. How about you, Nick? Well, I could probably say pretty much the same thing there. I mean, living up here in Northern California along the coast, you know, it's a very rural environment. Uh, we're surrounded by forest and, and uh, we have nature walking through our yard on a regular basis, whether that be, you know, the deer and the fox and the, and the squirrels or the bears coming around at night and, and then just uh, having the forest surround you you know, pretty much in all directions. That's, that's uh, quite remarkable in itself. Also living rurally, you live close to the land. I mean, whether you like it or not, you're, you're close to that environment. You know, you, you're sort of in sync with it. Uh, and, and I find that to be a necessity for who, who and what I am. I've been in that kind of environment since I was a little kid, you know, back in Ohio and then again down in Tennessee. And, and uh, that's my preferred place and environment to live in. Mm -hmm. 
I've always believed myself that you can't compete with art, with, sorry, with nature. You know, art can't compete with nature. It's so beautiful on its own, but the two of you, you, you've won, you've accomplished that. <laughs> well, everything you see around here, uh, you know, it's inspirational, you know, whether that's the, the, you know, the plant life, the animal life, you know, you're close to the elements, the weather, the seasons. I mean, it's like right now it's, it's uh, springtime, you know, everything's growing like crazy and, and uh, the landscape is now electric green because of all that new growth. So, I mean, how can you not be inspired by that sort of environment? Yeah. So it's rare that an artist chooses to make art in order to make money. Jeff Koons <laughs> might be an exception to that, but I'd like to ask you, what drives you to live the creative life that you do? What, why, did you why do you choose to call yourself an artist? I know it's not for money. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, you want to go first again? Or... Oh, you go. You go on that one. I, you know, I, got almost, I really don't look at it as a choice. It's just a matter of who I am. You know, it's like I, I'm Nick and you can call me an artist and you can say that I make art, but I'm just doing what I feel compelled to do. You know, it's, it's who and what I am. And it's, I don't really see it as a choice. You know, I see it as mandatory. You know, it, it's who and what I am and I'm compelled to do it. And I feel like uh, I have to do it as well as I possibly can. I have an obligation since this is my, my you know, I, don't, I shouldn't call it vocation, but I, I should uh, take it as far as I can you know, and, and make, make everything I can of it, so. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, what I was gonna say, I was just gonna say it, it, it hasn't really been a choice um, no. that I just felt that I was an artist from when I was little. And um, there was just never a question that making art was an essential to my being. Mm -hmm. um, and I see things in nature and images, they just sort of present themselves to me. And the interesting thing is when I make them, they never quite come out exactly like they are in my head, but that also is kind of the interesting part because you just never feel like you're done. Um, and then the building the creative life is another story. You know, that's been a long process, but I'm just very, very grateful that now I can de devote most of my time to art. And it's what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. so. It's a privilege to be in that position. I mean, yeah. I, I feel myself very fortunate that I'm, I'm able to uh, work full time in the studio these days. And that certainly hasn't been the case for much of my life. So I value all that time and, and uh, think it's a privilege and am very fortunate to uh, have the support that I do. And, and much of that comes from Amy. So, yeah. yeah. You know, this is a good time to uh, tell everybody that we decided not to go over bios because they are on the Marin Art and Garden Center website. So if you want to, they both have very interesting backgrounds and professional lives. And I encourage you to, to look on the website and, and check out their bios. Lots of good information there. I wanted to ask about your techniques and um, how you make the works you, work, you make, but the videos that we just saw were really kind of a good good explanation of that. Would you like to add anything to what we just saw in the videos about how you how you make what you make? Kathy, it's your turn. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I, I covered it pretty well in the in the video. But one of the things I wanted to say that um, because this show was delayed, you know, almost a year, and we were working in shelter in place, the places that I had my plates made, the places where I printed, they were closed down. Mm. So I ended up making work in my backyard that I probably wouldn't have made. Um, and the cyanotypes are those, those works where you just, you, I needed the paper, I needed the emulsion, I needed some branches and leaves and I needed sunlight. And so it was just, 
it was, you know, it was great that I was sort of forced into that um, creative process that might not have happened mm -hmm. otherwise. Yeah. Hmm. I've heard that from artists that they've really benefited from COVID because they can stay in their studios and do just do their work. It's okay to be socially isolated. Yeah, yeah. The good side of COVID. <laughs> it's the good side, right? Okay. Well, for myself, um, you know, my process starts with the woodwork. I'm often harvesting the wood myself. You know, I'm, I'm felling the trees in many cases. And, and uh, so I'm sourcing the wood. And then when it's in its larger state, because often these, these pieces I'm working with could be over a thousand pounds, all the work is being done outside, right? So all the chainsaw work and, and the and the bulk of the, the material being removed until I begin to get the shape and, and have something that I can manage, just muscle manage. You know, when it's outside, I've got a forklift I can maneuver things around with, but eventually I bring the woodwork indoors and uh, I don't have that kind of equipment. So I've got to be able to, once it's indoors, it's, it's down to a couple hundred pounds and I can muscle it around and, and then I begin to refine it. And most of the woodwork that I'm, I'm doing is, is carving away. So I'm working in a reductive manner, um, you know, slowly whittling away and, and looking for whatever that shape is uh, within the confines of that piece of wood. And that's a slow process. Um, you know, whether I'm working at wood or metal, I'm getting three or four pieces done a year. It just, it's slow. When it comes to the metal work, you know, most of that's being done outdoors as well. Um, you know, all the welding, the grinding, uh, especially on the bigger pieces is done outside. So I'm spending pretty much, I'd say three quarters of my time working outdoors when I'm working on these pieces. Uh, working the metal pieces, it's sort of backwards to how I work with wood. You know, with the metal, I'm starting with nothing, you know, and I'm building out. So I'm, I'm assembling things, I'm constructing things. And, and that's kind of the reverse of working in a reductive manner. It, that's something that took me a few years to wrap my head around, you know, coming from carving for 20 plus years to suddenly trying to build things out. It's like, well, trying to do things upside down, backwards and inside out all at the same time. And, and uh, there were a number of years where the metal work just was not, it, it didn't meet snuff, you know, it became part of the scrap heap or became parts of something else down the road. Uh, you know, and I bring the pieces in, the, the smaller pieces, bring them in once they're, they're closer to being, have their, their shapes and uh, finish them off to put patinas and paints and, and oil finishes on them. So that's, you know, I, I who I am, I, I like to be a very physical person. I am, you know, I like to muscle things around. So I, uh, that's how I approach my work, you know, whether it's, you know, an ax with woodwork or a hammer with the metalwork. I, I like that, that uh, direct physical contact and, and engagement with what I'm doing. So the next question is an over asked question and you might roll your eyes about it, but I always find it really interesting and really surprising how people answer this question. So who are some of the artists you admire and that inspire you? <laughs> so, you know, there are a few that have been, that have carried through the years. I mean, there have been a lot of artists, and I'm talking like Western, Western art. Uh, I've always been a big fan of Alberto Giacometti, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm also a big fan of the painter Egon Schiele. So, you know, I, I thought he was a remarkable painter, especially for, given the fact that he, but the work he was doing was pretty phenomenal and he died when he was 28 years old. So I've always found that quite remarkable that he had that facility to, to, to create the things he did at such a young stage of his life. But I'd say most of what I've been influenced by are native arts. And, and that's, you know, from, from uh, North America, uh, you know, stuff from Africa and then stuff from Australia, stuff that, uh, a trained artist, yeah. Exactly, and I think I, part of why I respond to so much of that art is is uh, it's got a soul to it that I think a lot of quote modern art, uh, I believe, lacks. So 
Uh, I've responded to that kind of art since I was a little kid. You know, when I first started in, in encountering pictographs and petroglyphs in the Southwest, uh, I was I was totally uh, enthralled with them, and still am at this this point in my life. Hmm. So, see, it was interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Kathy? Well, lately, you know, I go through different things, but lately, um, I've been thinking about um, Claude Monet and what he gave us in those late works, the water lilies and, and, and how the last works that I did in prep, you know, in this body of work for the show, very colorful, trying to capture the light and the atmosphere. You know, I'm in that, that um, tradition, which is kind of a surprise for me. Um, so, yeah, Claude Monet. I mean, the, the scale and the getting lost in the space and trying to, you know, abstractly capture that sense of light and your experience of nature. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also um, continually am inspired by contemporary photographers who work um, abstractly or work with um, photography in, you know, in non-traditional ways. I find that very fascinating. So those are just two things. There's more, but. That's good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say something, Nick? No, nope, just listening. Okay. <laughs> There's always more, aren't there, Kathy? I mean, there are lots of people there that, that uh, I found to be influenced by over the years. Oh, only, yeah. only a few have really lasted, you know, over the last yeah. 40 years. Yeah. I wonder if the two of you could talk for a minute about how your works play off of each other, how they complement or don't complement each other. The works in the show. Well, I'll start, I'll start with that one. <laughs> Is that okay, Nick? Oh, absolutely. It's your uh, turn. Well, I'm, you know, I'm just honored to be showing with Nick because I think his work is extraordinary. And um, I really feel like we work with similar subject matter, but in a completely different medium. Mm -hmm. And um, my favorites are the pieces in the wood, um, especially Black Beauty. Because for me, this piece, it sort of embodies the energy of growth and it unfurls organically like a flower or a wave. And it's, it's just incredible. And so I kind of strive for that feeling in my floral works. So it's, they're very, very related. And when you see them together, it'll be like, oh, if you look at the shadow of his work on the floor, it kind of looks like my print. <laughs> um, and I love Tinkerbell. I love his names. Um, and because when I think of trying to carve this piece out of a hunk of wood, it's like you removed everything that wasn't essential and just showed like the life force energy and the personality of the wood. And I just, I think that's amazing. And then um, lastly, seeing um, Catcher, it reminds me of the feeling that you get when you pick up like a seed pod or look at a a gnarled piece of wood and the bark, you know, the detail and the, just the beauty of the structure of nature. It's just like, you know, he's he's got these giant sculptures, but then the details of them are just very rewarding and perfect. And yeah. Well, thank you. Those are very kind words. Deserved. Deserved. Yeah. Deserved. And. I love showing with you, Kathy. You know, I, I just like, I love seeing your work up, up on the walls and, and I feel like, you know, you've made some very beautiful work. And I think the pair of us together, to me, I, I keep going back and I'm thinking, I'm thinking of walking through the forest, except it's a construct of our own, you know? So we've, we've between the two of us, we've created this entire environment, this experience as you're walking through. and. I find that really special. I can't, I don't know how many shows I've seen of artwork where I, I experienced that. So it, uh, it's, it's like walking through nature, but it's something you and I have, have created. And, and uh, I think it's very special for that. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, beautiful work. That I agree too. <laughs> got there, so, yeah. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> yeah. Kate, for your vision. 
Yep, you did. And thank you, Kate. You're, you're absolutely right, Kathy. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> so. Thank you, guys. What do you hope people take away from the show? What do you hope they leave the exhibition thinking, feeling? I, I hope they were walk away with feeling somewhat inspired and, and uh, with a sense of wonder and maybe uh, uh, a connection to, to the greater natural world that I think we're all part of. So I, I, don't, I don't know beyond that, you know, mm -hmm. maybe if, if we're lucky that uh, people walk away with some of the same uh, experience that we had, that we had in, in creating these pieces, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have thoughts about that? Oh Kevin? yeah, they're so similar to what he said. <laughs> um, Maybe we can get this in sync and say it at the yeah, same time. I, <laughs> um, I guess what I, I noted was that I want people to have an experience of unexpected beauty. Because for me, you know, creating, I try to create works of just the most incredible visual beauty that I can think of, that I can make. And I think that's good for the soul to sort of get lost in seeing beautiful things. And then the other thing is, I hope that it, it conveys that sense of the feeling that you get when you're in nature, where you slow down and you sense and feel what's around you. And that sort of creates a, a perceptual shift away from your, your everyday life and your, your pattern thinking and stories in your head. And that sort of gets you into a more uh, contemplative, restful state. And maybe then you'll realize that you are nature too. We're all nature. We're not separate. And, um, and nature has resilience and power, and so do we, so. Mm -hmm. You know, also, it's so wonderful that it's being seen in this beautiful garden. Yep. Because you can walk from the Art and Garden Center into the gallery, and it's like one blended experience. You can get the real thing, and then you can get the uh, creative interpretation of it. And I think it's such a great marriage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, this is my last question. Then we can, there's some interesting questions that came up on the chat board, but um, I'd love to hear what you think is next for you in your life. That's a question that some people hate, but maybe, maybe you're going to Hawaii because you're exhausted from this <laughs> trip. But what do you think of your artistic life? Kathy? Um, I am, re I got really, really inspired, um, doing this show and I feel like there's a lot of work I want to complete that is sort of in the vein of the large, uh, of, you know, taking the scale very big in the colorful works so that we're sort of approaching that, that enveloping space, like what Monet did, but I can't get as big as that because <laughs> you're on press, but so that's what I want to do. And I do have some um, residence time coming up in the spring at in Coots and then uh, Kala in the summer. So I'm going to keep working till I get a vaccine and I can go to the south of France or something. <laughs> <laughs> you should go. How about well, you, I'm just going to keep motoring. You know, I've, I, uh, <laughs> you know, all, all recent work that I've, made has been steel but i've been given the opportunity to, to uh create a big wood piece so i've got a three thousand ch pound chunk of wood that i've been working on a uh, big piece of oak from a 320 year old tree and uh i'm just going at it it's first time in a while that i've worked this way going back to a reductive manner of, of approaching things and trying to wrap my head around that and just going full tilt and uh you know, I figured that'll keep me busy and out of trouble till fall, and then we'll see what's after that. So. I can't wait to see what you both are going to do next. So here's a question that came up. Um, 
Nick, how do you how do you come up with the titles for your pieces? They're very fun. They they have evolved. You know, years ago I didn't know how to get titles to anything, so it was like untitled number eleven or untitled number twelve, and and that seemed totally lame. I just couldn't, you know. So it was something that evolved. I mean, I started giving them titles oh uh, six or seven years ago, but they were very simple. And, and some of my earlier works were much more representative of something you might find out in nature. Like there's a piece that I've called Leaf that looks an awful lot like a big leaf. So, but I wanted something that was more expressive. And, and I think the works become more expressive uh, over the last couple of years. And so the, the titles sort of evolve as the piece evolves, you know, it's, it, it, they usually don't come all at once. It's sort of like you, you, you put a pair of clothes on it as you're working you see what it looks like, feels how it feels, and maybe that name seems right or something like it is there. And, and then you sl slowly, the, the title usually comes kind of slowly as, as the piece evolves. So where they come from, I don't know. I, I look for something that seems to be appropriate for what the shape and piece is about. Mm -hmm. Kathy, there's a question for you here. How much does the paper play into your designs? Does the material itself greatly impact each piece? Hmm. Well, I always use the same kind of paper. Um, and it's, I like to really emboss it to make it sculptural. When I, when I run the things through the press, I crank the pressure up so that there's th this dimension to it. So, um, so in that respect, you know, it, it plays a big part. Um, I'm not quite sure how to answer that one. In some flip pieces, there's a lot of white, white space, you know, they're more open and then some of them are a lot more dense. Um, but I, I, I found a paper that I really like that it works for me and I keep using it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a question for both of you. An artist who spent more than eight decades of life teaching and making art once told me in his dotage that he wished he could unlearn everything he learned and see <laughs> art and his subject matter as a five-year-old. I never really understood what he meant. Do you, either of you have ideas? Well, I figure I don't know anything anyhow, <laughs> you know, so that's kind of our, how I approach everything. Yeah, it's just, you know, the older I get, the more I realize how little I know. And, yeah. and uh, you know, with any given piece that I'm working on, I might have a notion as to how I want to start it, but I really don't know where I'm going with that piece. I mean, it's just, you sort of dive in and, and you know, you sort of become part of the stream. The, of, I don't know, consciousness or whatever it might be, you know, that sort of attaches us or connects us to everything. And you just exist in that. And, and you know, things come out of that sort of ether and, and you know, materialize or manifest in, in what you're working on. So I don't think I know anything, you know. I mean, I know how to handle materials, but, you know, as far as knowing about art, you know, sure, I've been educated, but I don't know what that's been worth. It, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think I think I approach maybe every time I like every new piece of sculpture like it's like I'm a kid, like I'm five years old. How about you, Kathy? Oh, I agree with the five year old part. Yeah. That's, that's what I try to get back to, that sort of purity of vision and being willing to play and go, hmm, I wonder what that would look like. And, you know, you make a lot of mistakes. I have so much paper that is just, wow, been through a lot of paper, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I never, I don't, I mean, you can think theory and try to problem solve a piece, but it, it really comes down to an intuitive the piece has its own internal determination and you have to find it yep. and get yep. out of the way. That's how I look at it. Yeah, I don't think too much about it. You just do. You do it and you trust what you're doing, you know? 
And, and what you might be working on may not make any sense at that given moment, but you follow through with that trust and, and things evolve and, and they most often come together as long as you're trusting. And I mean, and, that, and that's something that I think has come through age. You know, I've had to learn that as a younger man, you know, you, you want everything immediately and you're willing to make rash decisions and you don't trust things yet. And, and uh, I think as I've learned to trust the whole process and, and to trust whatever it is that I engage when I'm, I'm working on something and being creative, uh, I think the pieces have gotten better. And, uh, and I get to go more places too. I mean, more doors open up as you learn to trust. So I really, I really agree with that too. It's, it's like you get um, an internal thread of like where you need to go, yeah. and you either listen or you don't. And the older I get, the more I, I really value that. And it's like when I know, I know. Okay, yeah. you, yeah. you have to do that, and that, and that's really great. Mm -hmm. It truly is. I mean, you, you just feel completely connected when, when you're trusting like that, and you're in that, in that vein or stream or thread or whatever you want to call it. Yep. Yeah, it's a great place to be. I think um, our program is almost over. We have a slideshow um, in the end, but I wanted to say something to Antonia and Stacy and Katie and all of the people at the Marin Art and Garden Center. This is probably the last show I'm going to do with them. And it's been such a pleasure and such a delight to work with all of you and to see how much you care about everything there at the Marin Art and Garden Center. You've done amazing things in the last, I think it's been three or four years since I've been working with you. And I, I just wanted to say thank you. you. You are a gift to me and a gift to Marin really, and the people that come and visit you. So please keep doing what you're doing. And I, I will miss you. <laughs> And it's been a great opportunity for me to um, present the work that we've done together. It takes a village, and there is a village there at the Marin Art and Garden Center. I, I really appreciate you.